All right, Rippers. Hey, I just wanted to thank all of you guys. That last video, the top five firearms for SHTF readiness. Hey, that was awesome. Your comments were awesome. There are so many great comments in there. If you haven't watched the video, you need to go watch it. If you haven't commented, please go comment and read the comments because there's some great information in there. In fact, there are some that I'm going to be making a video about, including red dots. There's a great, great one of the rippers in there left a comment about red dots that I think he's on point, And I want to go over it in a video. So that'll come up in the future. Keep an eye out. But for right now, we're talking about number five in shtf which was our long range rifle and if you remember right my choice was this remington 700 sendero that was set up h s precision stock comes stock this way bull barrel has just a 150 dollar 4 to 16 variable objective or adjustable objective uh scope uh in 338 ultra mag right and the reason i chose that round is is because it gets close to the performance of a Lapua, and it is more readily available brass loading components and loaded ammo, as well as I can go to the 250 and 300 grain Sierra Match King bullets to really reach out there and get some nice, tight, accurate shooting all the way out to 1,000 yards. Now, I have shot this one in many competitions from 300 to 600 and to 800 yards, and even taken animals at some considerable distances. So this is a great tool to have. It's great for me to have to protect my castle as well as put food on the table. Now we went over that in the last one, but let's go over some other options because while this isn't the top of the line, three, $4,000 gun, I mean, it only costs about 650 new on sale for the rifle and then another 150 for the scope at the time I got it, but it'll be a little bit more now if you can find one but it's a ready to go rifle. So what else, what other options can we have that will fit this long range need, right? Well, bolt actions are great. They're strong, they're reliable. They usually tend to be more accurate than semi-autos, but not in every case. But you can do things like old surplus guns like this. So Mosin Nagant shoots a six, 7.62 by 54R. It's roughly, it's a 30 cal bullet, roughly the speed, maybe a little bit hotter and faster than a 30 out six. Um, you can get military surplus ammo out there pretty, pretty readily available. You can get new ammo for it, right? And you can even get a cool bayonet in case you got to do some trench warfare, right? It's got a nice long barrel. These were known to be pretty accurate, especially for an old wartime rifle. Just make sure when you get one, you get one with a good head space and a good bore. But if you've got a good headspace and a clean board, this could be a really, really feasible alternative for long range shooting. Now it doesn't have an optic on it and it's probably a little bit more difficult to put an optic on it, but you could go make 300 yard shots with this all day long uh, and definitely hit your target or even a milk jug. And I'll prove it in future videos. And we'll go over this Mosin a little closer and another one I have that's a different option in future videos that we do on the range. So check that out. So that's one option. It does kind of have a funky bolt that goes all the way up and pulls back and then forward, right? But other than that, they do make twisted down models for scopes and whatnot, but I kind of like this just the way it is. So that's one option. And these right now, I mean, there's one time you could probably get them for $69, but right now probably looking at about three to 350 maybe more depends you know people are gouging out there and i don't think that's fair but it is the way our system works so other than that you could go with something like this this is a lee infield i think it's an ishapur model if i'm correct it's kind of old and beat up but it's still got a good bore and a good head space and it's a good solid rifle and the cool thing about this one is it's in 308, which is a NATO round, which means it is more widely available. There's a lot of surplus ammo out there for it. And it's something you can afford to feed and still have some range behind it. Now it's a little on the weighty side, but it'll do, right? And this one, well, you could probably figure out a way to mount an optic to it too, but I kind of like it just the way it is. So that's another option. And these are running probably right in that same range, about 300 to $400. Um, and they were cheaper back in the day. And if you can find a cheaper one, we'll snag it up. You won't be sorry, right? 
So that's another option. Now, and these are affordable options. Another affordable option is your family's hand-me-downs. This is my grandpa's pre-64, uh, let's see, pre-64 Winchester in 270 Winchester, right? That is a fast round. It's a little small bullet moving at a pretty good pace. So it can reach out there and get something. This thing itself has taken probably its share of elk, especially by my grandpa, at ranges that were out, out there poke, I'll bet. So that being said, to me, it might be a little light for an elk, but there are lots of guys out there that would disagree and say that they love the 270 for deer, elk, and everything else. So it is an option. And the best part about it is usually if it's handed down from your family, well, it's usually good iron like this. The pre-64s were known to be great steel, great shooters, and a great rifle. And people loved this action, right? It's a controlled feed action. So, and you know, put a decent scope on it. This is an old Leopold that my granddad put on it. Uh, that's a very X2, right? Gold ring. And it's a, uh, let's see, what do we got here? A three to nine scope, which is your standard hunting scope. So. This is a great option for reaching out and for putting food on the table. So you don't always have to go out and buy yourself a new fancy rifle, although we all like to do that, right? All right, so another option is to build yourself a hunting rifle that fits all of the aspects. Now, this is what I use personally to hunt with. I hunt everything from deer to elk to whatever else with it. It's built on a Remington short action, right? And it is in, what do we got here? 300 Remington Short Action Ultra Mag. So what this is, it's a short fat round, shoots a 30 cal bullet, and almost, and I can get it pretty close to the performance of, and sometimes over, depending on the load, if I hand load this, I can get it to compete with the 300 Win Mag, which is a great long range round. Now the nice thing about this is, is you could have the action lightened a little bit. If you have, say you have an old short action out there, you can build it into this rifle. Just get yourself an H&S Precision Stock, which has the aluminum pillar bedding and floated barrel. So weather doesn't affect it. You don't have to glass bed it. When it's locked in, it's good to go. It has, and then all you gotta do is get yourself a stainless steel barrel, have a gunsmith put it together, uh, with this, I went with a lighter contour barrel because I wanted to scrub weight from this and I put a muzzle brake on the end, as you can see. And uh, it's just a wonderful rifle. It doesn't weigh much. And I will say this, on this one back then, when I was doing better, uh, I splurged for the optics. This is a Leopold Mark IV, yeah, Mark IV Variax III or something like that gold ring. This thing is awesome. It's a 30 millimeter tube, 50 millimeter front bell. It is a four and a half to 14, which is perfect for shooting close in and all the way out to long range. And you don't need much more than 14 power, to be honest. Otherwise you start getting into things like Mirage and seeing your heartbeat a lot more. There's a lot of factors when you get blown up, especially in hot weather. Now, this does have an adjustable objective that's on the side. I really like that over the bell one and it has a 30 millimeter tube. This thing gathers light that what you think is dark, when you look through the scope, it looks like dusk, not dark. So there's still plenty of light that this thing gathers, hence the reason for the sunshade on the front, because when it's really sunny, you need to cut some of that light down because it can interfere with the scope. So this is a great way to go and a great option to go. And this is something I could use from small game, like deer, that kind of stuff, antelope, uh, all that kind of stuff, all the way up to varmints, to, to long-range elk, or even long-range shooting if needed. It does have the ballistics to do it, and uh, as long as I'm not making repeated shots, which you shouldn't have to long-range, the barrel won't heat up too much, so the smaller barrel will work just fine. So that's an option for you if you're looking for an excuse to build a rifle. And if you are, I know the guy that can do it for you. Contact me on the email. So, next would be another bolt action. This was my hunting rifle, which I then passed down to my kids to hunt with. But this is a Model 700 short action, just the way it comes from the factory. This was a not expensive rifle. This was um, just a regular nylon stock on it. 
It has a regular contour barrel, stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about rust. I just put a $150 weaver on there, which are probably about 200, 250 now, but, and it's a four to 16 power. Again, probably a little bit over what you need, but it's a great scope, has a nice reticle on it, has adjustable objective. For what you get for the price, you get a lot for your money in a weaver like this. Now, this one right here is in 7mm08, which is basically like a 308, but a little faster, a little bit better ballistically. And uh, well, it's, I love the round. I have a couple rifles in it just because of how well it works. Now, it's not as readily, readily available. So you're gonna not see it out there in army surplus ammo or military surplus ammo. You're not gonna see a whole big stockpiles of it, but it is pretty, like if you go to most of your stores, most of them carry 7mm08. So it's a great option as long as you can get ammo. Now. I did upgrade it, and this is a neat upgrade. A friend of mine, his name's Kevin Wyatt, Wyatt Outdoors, he's also the gunsmith I was mentioning, designed this option right here. This is a magazine release that replaces your trigger guard and your, your, base, your uh, shell plate and makes it a magazine fed bolt action. Holds 10 rounds of 7 mm weight. I mean, who doesn't need more ammo, right? You should only need to take one shot, but it's always nice to know you've got nine more to go, right? And it allows you to carry other mags that you can take and reload into it if needed. So say you're out making a long shot, but now you got a skedaddle and there's zombies everywhere. You can carry magazines for your bolt action, which I think is really kind of neat and really kind of handy. It does stick out a little bit, but it does work real well. It's called the Det Mag, and I believe that's D-E-T-M-A-G, right? Or D-E-T-A-M-A-G, but look it up. It's a great product, easy to install. Now, I also think that now Magpul makes a kit now that's pretty affordable that replaces the same parts and uses Magpul mags, not the AR kind or anything like that, but a special mag that Magpul makes for this to turn your bolt actions into a 10 rounder as well. That's pretty cool. I think that's a neat upgrade, right? Especially if we're talking SHTF. Now, that being said, let's step back in time a little bit and look at a semi-auto. I mean, who doesn't like the M1 Grand? There's not a lot to go wrong here. This is a robust, great platform. It shoots great. Ask anybody that's been to a long range, uh, you know, like a junior marksmanship program or even the CMP where you can get these, right? Civilian marksmanship program, any of those competitions and you'll see guys that can shoot using iron sights and shoot out as far as a thousand meters. That's pretty good. So this will shoot all day long, 300 to 600 yards. Now, the only drawback to this is its weight, right? Its price isn't too bad depending on where you get it from and if it's a collector's model or not. If you're not looking for collectors and you can buy one that's a new production or uh, a, a rebuild or repurpose or a civilian marksmanship program, they can be more affordable. Sometimes you can find good ones at your, at your, uh, your gun shows and stuff too, right? Of course, you know, where they do background checks on everyone, contrary to popular belief. So anyway, that being said, the only other drawback is, is that it does actually take clips, the little clips that hold a bundle of eight rounds that you have to pop in there. And if you don't learn how to do it right, it'll grab your thumb when that thing slams shut. So you gotta practice with that, but those are handy. Now you can find them at gun shows and at pawn shops and things like that. They're usually a dollar or less a piece and you just get yourself a whole box of those, right? And then they're ready to go. They're like a magazine, but not, right? So it's a great option. This one here is a little shorter as you notice. It's a tanker model for tank people that are in tanks so they can get in and out easier and still have the semi-automatic firepower back then. So it's a great option and it's, a rifle that will last you a lifetime and then some. Now, this one is in 30-06, by the way. Now, this one is from my dad. This is an old Navy model. This was contracted by the Navy to be built in 308. I don't know why the Navy's got to be difficult and have to have something smaller, but they did. They wanted it in 308, probably because they used a lot of other 308 and other stuff, and, well, that's what, just what they wanted. And so this is a 38, uh, a Navy contract 308, which is a ready, readily available round. You're gonna be able to find it in military surplus and all of that. And a heck of a shooter. I mean, if you've ever busted water jugs or watermelons with this thing, it's a lot of fun. And with the 30-06 as well. 
So this is a great option as well. It has a little longer barrel, so you get a little bit more accuracy and a little bit more range out of it, a little velocity, um, and something to think about. If you have one, or maybe your grandpa's got one he wants to hand down as well. That's a perfect thing that will work in those situations. Now, what we haven't talked about yet is semi-auto. And is there a place for it other than the Garands? And yes, there's what's called a designated marksmanship or designated marksman rifle, right? That being said, this is my designated marksman style rifle. I had this one. It's made by a company called Hunting ARs. They make them in any caliber you want. They use uh, black hole weaponry barrels. This one is a three landing groove target barrel. I think that's awesome. There's a lot of advantages to that. We can go over that in another video, but it's three landing groove, has a AAC muzzle brake on the end to help with recoil, as well as I can put a suppressor on the end. And this thing is really pretty quiet. And uh, it has a heavy contour barrel as well. Um, full floated tube, of course, on it. And it is in 6.5 Creedmoor. Now I know some of you are gonna say, well, 6.5 Creedmoor, wouldn't 308 be a better choice because of the more availability? And I said, well, yeah, it probably would be because I could use more military surplus rounds and things like that. And I'd probably be able to find rounds in SHTF easier. But 6.5 has made quite a stay here. And there's quite an availability out there and you can always reload it yourself as well. So it is a great option. And it is just a hair better than the 308. When I shoot this alongside a 308 version, the 308, it's not quite the laser as the other one. It has a little bit more drop. And this 6.5 is just, I mean, this is a half MOA uh, AR-10 style rifle all day long. So it really does make a difference, but it's not enough to where if you had a, only the 308 to choose from, I'd get the 308 uh, because you are gonna have a little bit more variety of ammo. Now, that being said, this one here, adjustable stock course, Magpul furniture, I have my 45 degree flip up sights in case the electronics give away in this because this has another one of those Burris systems I talked about on there. This one's the MTAC, so it has a range finding uh, reticle in it. It's only a one and a half to four power scope. So even if you pull it up on full power, you're still not so narrow in your field of view that you have to hunt for your target. It also for close range has a red dot that rides there or you could ride it on a 45 on the side. This just comes with it, so I put it on there with it. It also comes with the uh, um, one-piece uh, quick-detach uh, scope mount, so you can just take this whole unit off, move it to another rifle, or just take it off if it's not working, throw it in your pack, and use your iron sights or your, uh, well, or your iron sights. So uh, it has ambidextrous um, charging handle, and an important part on a designated marksman rifle, I think, or any rifle, is a nice three and a half, three pound trigger. Uh, and I like a single stage so that I know when I touch my finger on it, all I have to do is put a little bit more pressure and it goes off. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with a two stage. A lot of people like that little bit of take up so they can kind of take it up and know where they're at and then break the shot. Uh, it's kind of like Chevys and Dodges and Fords, right? Uh, there's nothing that is better than the other. It's just a matter what you like. You can have 20 to 25 rounds in this as well. And it's built, like I said, on the AR-10 platform. This upper is what I purchased, and then I built this lower, which is just a Palmetto State Arms lower, and uh, put the parts I wanted in it, except this one does have an ambidextrous magazine release. And uh, I can tell you what, this thing is wicked accurate all the way out to easily 600 yards plus. And I mean, you can make an 800 to 1,000 yard shot with it, but we're talking money from 600 and in and you don't have to really work on your elevation much to get there. So this is a really, really great choice is to build yourself a specific designated marksman rifle. And why? Well, because this could be used from hunting to uh, home defense to uh, battle rifle if you have to get out of dodge uh, and you're doing pulling security or something like that and your long reach overwatch or long range shooting for hunting, right? This will do it all. And that's an important thing to think about when you're out there choosing. So I hope that this helps you all kind of think of the questions. You know, this isn't about me telling you what the perfect rifle is and what you should buy because anybody that does that, well, it's really not fair because 
everybody's different. Everybody has different needs, different abilities, different skill levels, different, you know, things they can and can't do, different physical abilities, right? So you need to get the option that fits you best for long range shooting for your number five choice of SHTF firearms. And you need to just know, I hope this helps you figure out the questions you wanna ask. What are you getting it for? What does it need to do? How many roles is it gonna play? Uh, what, um, you know, what is the availability of ammo? What recoil can you handle? All of those questions and the ones you guys are gonna put in the comments that I didn't think of, this is to help you figure that out. So you, if you are going to get a long range rifle, make your choice for it because you do not need to buy thousand dollars of setup to have a rifle that drives tax at 100, 200, 300, 500, 800 yards, right? Because I have actually won many competitions in the beginning with a Savage 110 Varmeter series, which had the heavy barrel on it, nothing special and a weaver scope so don't be talked into getting something expensive unless of course you can and you just want to because it's cool right but you don't need to so that being said be safe be secure always be aware of your surroundings and be getting ready and prepared for anything that may come your way and if you can carry be sure you do and if you can't Look into how you can and be fighting to get to a moved up so we all can, right? Because it is our rights. Until next time, adios.